Hello everyone, welcome to Shri Voyage. Today we're gonna to go over a full face of MAC products. Now it's been a while since I've played with MAC. I am a professional makeup artist of 25 years. Now my career in the beginning, I used MAC products all the time, but as I've aged, I found that they were a bit drying. So today I wanna to put them to the test and see if the formulations are a bit more hydrating and if they'll work for not just myself, but also for my clients. Let's get started. So I have nothing on my face but a light moisturizer, and we're gonna start with brows today. Now, as you can see, I have no brows. I thank the 90s and Kevin Aquan and Francois Nars for that because the style was all about the 90s overplucked thin brows. Now, three months later, after I plucked my brows, full bushy brows were back in. So for those of you thinking about doing the trend, which is coming back again, don't do it. Let me be a warning to you because now I have to constantly look for the best eyebrow, pencil, pen, or pomade. So that said, the MAC makeup artist told me about the Shape and Shade Brow Tint. So of course I had to try it and it has a dual end. One side has a spongy tip applicator that inside the lid you just push in and the products in here and then it has the felt tip and on this side you can go in and do small little strokes to create the illusion of having more full brow hair. So let's see how this goes. Just doing this is going to make your brows look fuller because it's staining the skin underneath. Now this side, I'm going to shake up, is where you can create little mini brow hairs to make it look more natural. Okay, so here's the thing. I have a gap right here, and this isn't filling it, the felt side, and the powder isn't filling it either. So I'm going to have to go back in with an eyebrow pencil to fill it in. And now it's becoming tedious. I want something that is gonna be a little quicker. I don't mind spending time on my brows. I have thin brows. I'm just used to spending a majority of the time filling in my brows, making them look like I have more hair than I actually do. But if I'm having to use three or four or five products to create my brow, that's just too much for me. So I thinned out the tail on both sides of my brow to match up as best as I can. I'm just gonna go with this 90s-esque brow here. And I'm going to add to it the benefit 24 hour brow setter. This is the only product that I'm gonna to use today that isn't MAC. Now I used to use this a long time ago and I can't remember if I loved it or not. So I'm gonna try it on again and see how I feel about it. Everyone loves this, so hopefully I do too. Now this is supposed to help keep your brow in place. I have not found one product in my 25 year career as a makeup artist that actually sets my brows besides hairspray, eyelash glue, and soap. And usually I do a little bit of soap with hairspray to really hold a brow. Otherwise I find everything looks good and then falls right down. In fact, the Anastasia Beverly Hills, I had so much hope for it to stay because the brow freeze sounded amazing, did absolutely nothing for my brows. All right, so it has a flat side and then it has the side that has the ridges or the bristles. So I'm going to take the flat side to deposit the product and then the bristles to comb the hair up. And I'm hoping this softens this brow pencil from MAC just a bit here so it doesn't look so harsh. So by the end of the video, I'll see if it's still holding the shape. Hopefully it is. The 90s are calling. Woo, that is a 90s brow. All right, let's go ahead and get into the next product. The MAC Studio Radiance Moisturizing and Illuminating Silky Primer. And it does state that it's an instant, all-day soothing, hydrating for plumper looking skin primer. Improves radiance and luminosity for a healthy, dewy glow. Smooths and softens skin with a no greasy residue. Creates a smooth canvas, improves application and lay down of your makeup, does not clog pores, does not cause acne, silky, fast absorbing, and leaves a cushy feeling on the skin. My goodness, that's a, a mouthful. All right, let's try it on. Let's see if it does what it claims. Ooh, it smells really nice. Very light, kind of a 
coconut. A soft floral coconut scent. Ooh, this feels good. This feels very, very good. Like a light gel cream. Refreshing on the skin. It feels actually cooling. I think I might have found a new hydrating primer. I've been using the Victoria Beckham primer, which I really like, and it kind of reminds me of that kind of feeling. And the RMS. I've been using RMS a lot lately, too. Their new Unlock primer. I really like that one. But believe it or not, the RMS, I need a little more hydration right now. And this feels fantastic. So the next product I have to go on top is the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body Sheer Foundation. It says to shake it well. And I'm using the color N3, by the way. I go between N2 or N20 and N3 or N30. And it says shake well. All right, put a couple drops here. This is a beautiful, lightweight, jelly texture. What I love about this product, as well as the Face and Body by Makeup Forever, is it neutralizes discoloration really nice, and it's a no makeup, makeup, makeup. <laughs> so it just looks like second skin with a little dew to it. Let's bring it in. Now hopefully you saw that it created a really nice, dewy, radiant, luminous appearance on the skin, but I wouldn't say it does a lot for pores. You can definitely see my pores come through. So if that's a concern and you're wanting to have like a airbrushed type of finish, then just use a primer that has like oil control, usually anything that has kind of that silicone to it, you can put in the pores and it will fill everything in and then you can go on top with your foundation. So I'm gonna go ahead now and work on the eyes. I got several of the Pro Longwear paint pots. I used to love these and I stopped using them because I found that they dried out in the pot before I got halfway through. And so make sure you close them very tightly. And I did do that, but it still just dried out very quickly. Hopefully they've been reformulated to have a little more hydration, not just in the pot, but on the lids, because although they were beautiful on younger, taut looking eyes, I did find that they did grab a bit of texture as they set. They go on really creamy and then they dry down and they can really grab a lot of texture as far as I remember. So I wanted to try a couple today and see if hopefully they've been reformulated. So the first color I'm gonna try is Painterly. This is one of my favorites. I use this one and there's one that's in a medium tone and a deeper set tone. It neutralizes any discoloration on the lid and really does a beautiful job at setting the lid so that color goes on much more impactful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my Kevin Aquan eyeshadow brush. I'm just gonna grab a bit and then lightly build up the color. Less is more. I feel like back in the day, I probably used too much. So that's why I had some creasing. Isn't that lovely? You see how it just brightened the whole lid compared to this side? Love that. I'm gonna go now with just a really pretty pearl color. And this is the color Vintage Selection. Hopefully you guys can see there's just a light shimmer. No, we're not gonna go yet to the next color. I'm gonna take whatever's left on the brush here and I'm going to add a bit out here to the upper cheekbone to create some highlight. So I'm gonna kind of see shape this around here. Add champagne highlight. All right, on to the next color. This is groundwork. And before we get onto the eyes with this, I'm gonna take just a little bit on my finger here and just stick it right here where that jaw opens and closes. As you can see, it has a bit of a gray undertone to it. So it looks beautiful for creating shadows across the face. As you can see, when I turn my head, a little bit of a shadow here. That's what we want. A little bit underneath the nose area and a little bit underneath the lip here. Just a little bit. See how this looks fuller down here now? Grab me my MAC 221 brush. I'm gonna go in now. 
and I'm going to create some shape. Now it doesn't matter what eye shape you have, you can have a lid that sits like this and all you'll do is just go right on top right here. You just want to go to wherever that brow bone sits. doesn't matter where your skin sits. It matters where the structure of the bone is at. I'm just going back and forth on that brow ridge, working up underneath that brow, not going down. We don't want to close the eye. And really, it's just about using shadow and light to enhance your features. I added mascara. I'm going to go ahead now and use the Black Mirror for eyeliner. Look at that, whoo! Easiest way to do liner. And even if it gaps, as you can see, I kind of gapped it a bit. I just take my finger and lightly drag it against that line. Just kind of smooth it out. All right, black mirror for eyeliner on both eyes. I'm gonna go in now with a MAC lipstick that is, I would definitely say, a favorite, and that is Velvet Teddy. I want to add a bit more of a wow factor here, so I'm going to grab the color Jupiter now and put that in the middle. Now here is where MAC products really come through for me, and that's their lipsticks. These are just a few of my MAC lipsticks, so I am a MAC lipstick lover, definitely. If you guys want me to do a full video showing you my favorite MAC lipsticks, I think I have like 30 that I pulled out today for this look. Let me know and I will dedicate a full video using one brand. You guys seem to like when I focus on one product, one brand, so that you can get an idea of like what colors would be your favorite to use or to purchase. So let me know in the comments down below. Let me go ahead and swatch these products that I used, the lipsticks as well as the paint pots, so that you guys can see them all together. All right, we are done. I have to say, I really like how this look came out. It's been a while since I've just fully dived into a full face of MAC products, and I'm really enjoying the texture and the finish of this. Now, I am combination dry, I am in my 40s, and like I stated in the beginning, it's one of the reasons I moved away from MAC. It just didn't feel like it was hydrating enough for my skin and I needed a softer finish, and I am really impressed with how the finish came out with these products. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you wanna support my channel, all you need to do is use the affiliate links below. When you shop, I get a small commission, which helps me to continue to do this channel, and then subscribe, hit the like button, and leave me a comment. I hope to see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.